Hi there everyone and welcome to Tech Cravers. Today I have a very controversial subject to show you, because this is the infamous MIG Switch flash card. A few YouTubers have already featured this card and now I've also managed to get my hands on one. I purchased this card from SkinPixel.com and after weeks or possibly even months of delay it finally arrived in my mailbox. While many of you undoubtedly know what this is, there are likely some of you who have only heard of it or perhaps barely that. The MIG Switch flashcard appeared online in articles around New Year and was claimed to be able to play all your Switch games from a single Nintendo Switch card. The hype was quite real with well-known YouTuber in handled gaming niche Taki Udon garnering millions of views on his initial videos featuring the MIG Switch. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What exactly is the MIG Switch flashcard? Well, as the official website explains, it's a backup and development device for all Nintendo Switch consoles, regardless of their version, firmware or type. And essentially what this means is that it's a portable tool designed to efficiently back up all data on Nintendo Switch game cartridges. You can then throw all of this data onto a micro SD card, which is then inserted into the MIG Switch flashcard, essentially tricking your Nintendo Switch into thinking it's an original game. But everyone one understands, of course, that this card won't just be used to avoid carrying around 10 different cartridges when traveling, which honestly hasn't been much of a hassle since the days of dealing with bulky binders filled to the brim with CDs. So sit back and let's delve into what the MIG switch can and can't do, whether it's easy or difficult and whether it's truly worth your money or not. Let's jump into it. So first of all, where can you buy the MIG Switch flashcard? Well, if you head over to the MIG Switch website, there's a tab for specifically where you can purchase the card depending on your location in the world. Currently, it seems that most websites are still only accepting pre-orders, but it's also possible that some batches have started to be shipped out by now. As a reference, I bought my card from the UK site called SkinPixel.com and I have reasons to believe that I was among the very first to receive the card delivered. So keep in mind that depending on where you buy it from, the delivery times are probably gonna vary a lot. The current price for these cards are $65 dollars plus shipping, however I paid a bit more than that to be among the first deliveries and obviously it seems to have worked. You'll also notice that you can pre-order the MIG Switch dumper, either as a separate device which also costs $65 or bundled together with one or more MIG Switch cards. I don't have the dumper in my possession yet as it has faced even greater delays than the MIG Switch card, but I'm hopeful to receive one soon so that I can make a video about it as well and how everything works in symbiosis with each other. But until then I'll be using MIG Switch other solution to back up my legally bought Switch games, which is a homebrew app that you can use if you have a Nintendo Switch modified with custom firmware. The dumper on the other hand is a simple adapter that you can connect to any computer via cable and dump your bought game cartridge and get all the essential files that you need to use with your MIG Switch flashcard without the hassle of first getting a modified Nintendo Switch. But now listen to me when I say this, because even though it's absolutely possible to acquire games through means other than making backups of your own legally bought games, under no circumstances will I demonstrate how to do it or even recommend it. If you load your MIG Switch card with a game that has been improperly dumped or someone else use it online on their Switch at the same time as you do, your Nintendo Switch will be banned and rendered unusable online indefinitely. It's also very important to respect your local laws regarding making backups of your games where you live. Where I'm from, it's permitted to make backups of your own games for personal use. Now, depending on where you purchase the MIG Switch card, it may come more or less assembled. Funny enough, my MIG Switch arrived completely disassembled and I had to assemble it myself. I had to remove the circuit board from an anti-static bag, insert it into the two plastic pieces that make up the card casing, then screw everything together with a tiny screw and finally attach the sticker. Super easy DIY task of course, but I still thought I'd mention it. And I also got this small paper cover to keep the card inside. And apparently I also got this 20% code for customized Joy-Cons over at SkinPixel.com. Feel free to use it if you want to. And you should also know that no memory card is included, so you need to sort that out on your own. I have a 128GB card from SanDisk that I find very cost effective, and I will leave a link to the best deal for it in the video description if you need to get one for yourself. MIG Switch have had a few problems with some memory card brands, so make sure you get a card that is compatible. 
Now to get going and start using your MIG switch, the first thing you need to do with your memory card is to insert it into your computer and format the card as XFAT. You can do this directly in Windows by right clicking on the device. Once you have done that, you'll need a firmware file called update.s2 from the MIG switch website. Place this file in the root directory of your memory card, then remove the card from your computer, insert it into your MIG switch and then insert it into your Nintendo switch. The MIG switch built in LED light will flash blue for a few moments moments while the firmware is being installed on your card. When the updating process is complete, the LED light will stop flashing and stay blue. Then your MIG switch is ready to be used with your game dumps. Speaking of game dumps, since this part, namely the game dumping process, is so controversial, I won't demonstrate how it's done. But if you don't have access to the dumper, as I mentioned before, you can use your soft or hardware modded Nintendo Switch to copy the files you need from your bought physical Nintendo Switch games using the Homebrew software. The Homebrew is called MIG Dump Tool, and it's provided by MIG Switch on their website. The tool, or the Homebrew, will, just like the dumper, assist you in extracting five essential files that you can then place on your MIG Switch card and trick your once again unmodified Nintendo Switch into thinking that a regular game has been inserted. Not only that, the perk is that you can dump all your physical Nintendo Switch games and place them on the same memory card. By inserting and removing your MIG Switch card, you can then cycle through your entire library of game dumps. This particular solution involving removing and inserting the card to change games is far from perfect however. With 20 or 30 games loaded, as you've likely already figured out, you'll need to insert and remove your MIG switch card numerous times to get the right game. But for anyone wondering, yes it works, just as advertised, which is quite crazy to be honest. My Nintendo Switch doesn't have a clue that this card is not an original game. Moreover, there are no issues logging in and using online services as long as you have made a correct game dump and that all essential files are on the card. So, to the question that many are naturally wondering, will this create a piracy boom unlike anything Nintendo has ever seen? Well, the short answer is actually no. And the longer explanation is that this doesn't really change anything that isn't already a problem for Nintendo and the industry at large. Yes, with the MIG Switch dumper in the hands of the masses, which still hasn't happened because hardly anyone owns one, there will be significantly more people who can dump games and then distribute these games, or ROM files, online. However, the catch is that a simple Google search can already lead you to any Nintendo Switch game as of today. And believe me, as I've already mentioned, with the MIG Switch card, you do not want to download a game and play it on your unmodified Nintendo Switch, because the risk is basically 100% certain that your console will be banned for all eternity. This card is for anyone who wants to back up their own personal library of games and then bring nothing but the console and the MIG Switch card when they are on the go. Then, of course, there are a small group of people who may already have a banned Nintendo Switch console or have never bothered to connect their Switch to the internet in the first place. That is, those who would never even consider being connected in a game. Yes, for these individuals I suppose the piracy question becomes a bit different, but these, I believe relatively few individuals, will also only have half the gaming experience in the first place. So, who should buy the MIG Switch flashcard? Well, at its current state, I'd say that the MIG Switch is primarily for anyone who simply wants one cartridge with all their games on it. That's the number one primary reason. Of course, there are many other reasons as well, such as the fact that I own three Nintendo Switches, and now my two sons and I can play the same games on all of them, and I don't have to buy three copies anymore. This is, of course, also a somewhat controversial issue in many parts of the world, but the fact is that according to an EU directive on private copying, it is actually permitted to make copies of music CDs, movies and physical games for sharing within the immediate family and for private use. But changes in this area can happen anytime, so always follow your local rules and laws before deciding to make ROM files of your games. But everything is far from perfect with the MIG Switch flashcard in its current state. I've already talked about the problem of cycling through 30 games with one card. Not because I think it will wear out the card reader in my Nintendo Switch, it will probably last longer than my MIG Switch card to be honest. But it's an extremely user unfriendly feature that takes up a lot of time. And then during recording I also encountered a problem that the MIG Switch developers actually described on their website. Namely that the MIG Switch card gets stuck on one game. It didn't matter if I deleted the game 
or even switched consoles, my MIG Switch card had decided that it was Mario Kart 8 and nothing else. The solution apparently is to time how you eject the card and insert it again with microsecond precision. It's overly burdensome to have to consider timing when inserting or removing the card from your Switch. This already inconvenient function should operate seamlessly regardless of timing. On the positive side, however, the developers seem to release new firmware every now and then, and hopefully all the early problems will disappear over time, and we'll get a much smoother and more responsive experience. Many other flashcards for Nintendo 3DS and similar systems have a small button on them to cycle through games on the cartridge, so perhaps if we can't get software-based solutions, such a solution will be relevant here as well. I don't know, but what I do know is that there's at least room for some improvement. Anyway, that's it for my first video on the MIG Switch flashcard. I try to cover things that I know people are talking about, but if you have any questions regarding this or the dumper, let me know in a comment down below and I will answer them in upcoming videos. This is a super exciting product and we have already seen cloned competitors that promise to do things even better, so the future will probably have some fun stuff for us. If you liked this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to Tech Cravers for my upcoming videos on the MIG Switch and the dumper and many other things as well. Thanks for watching, Tech Cravers out!